for the party, Jamila Jamil! <laughs> This is just for you. Oh my God, I had to show it off to everybody <laughs> because I mean, I looked down and I was like, oh, we need to start in front of the desk. I went full dessert. <laughs> you you yeah. are full dessert. <laughs> now, are, I am so excited about your new show, She-Hulk, Attorney at Law. <laughs> Wait, are we doing the whole interview here? No, let's go back okay. and sit at the desk. <laughs> All right, here okay, we go. What about Dessert. You are now a full-on Marvel villain, Titania. I love this show. What is it that maybe is a detail that you can give us about She-Hulk that we might not know? Well, look, there's been a lot of talk about our show being about misogyny, and it's made some men who haven't even seen it very angry. Um, and, and that's a shame, because misogyny is something that affects everyone. I mean, men are killing themselves at higher rates than anyone else. And so patriarchy, misogyny, these are things we all need to be talking about. And I actually play the biggest misogynist in the show as a woman, wow. which is important, because we know that women can be guilty of misogyny. Yes, absolutely. I've got a little mm-hmm in the audience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think some people are just threatened and upset by a show that is about women, by women, centering women. And that's just, you know. Um, can I ask you yeah. advice? What is one account that you, as such a social media advocate, and you play a social media villain I know, in the and show. I speak like this in the show, which yeah. is really new for me. But <laughs> I just feel like we've never had an, like a, demonic level villain who also kind of talks like this. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so good. You sound like you're from the San Fernando Valley, which Thank is you. why I sound Thank like you. this. <laughs> um, what is one platform we should all follow today? I'm Starting today. I really like Rich Auntie Supreme. It's a small account, but it's run by Rachel Cargill, who has a huge account on social media. She is a wonderful anti-racist activist, but she's got this account called Rich Auntie Supreme that is for women who do not wish to have children. I am one of those women. I believe that it does not make my life sad or empty. It means I sleep in forever. <laughs> and so I, uh, I love anything that celebrates women's choice and people's choice. And if you don't want to have a baby, there's nothing wrong with you. It's a really hard world and it's totally okay. And I'm with you. You can come hang out with me. Yeah, I love that. Do you, you know yours. what I like to call it? What? There's motherhood and otherhood. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, well, will you hit some headlines with us? Sure. All right, well, that Jamila, you have the first story. <laughs> okay, so speaking of social media, here is a question. Are you too quick to block someone after a breakup. Refinery29 says more people are hitting block immediately after a relationship ends, either romantic or platonic. In cases where there's a serious safety and wellness concern, like in situations of harassment or abuse or otherwise, of course, a block is fully warranted. But outside of that, if you're too quick to block an ex, friend or a lover, might you regret it later? Are you losing out on a chance for emotional growth? Drew, Ross, are you too quick to block? Uh, no, I'm, I'm not a blocker. I think blocking them gives them too much power. Yeah. You know what I mean? They see that you block, they see that you care. I like to mute and then silently stalk them. And I think that, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because if you block, you can't look later. Yeah, yeah. Agree, agreed. Thank you. By the way, that's true. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, why aren't we just muting people? They'll never know what you're doing. Mute. Mute. Block, delete, repeat. <laughs> There's a bumper sticker. I like your attitude. <laughs> I really do. Okay, next. Ever take a selfie and immediately hate it? Well, apparently there's a psychological reason. Insta reports that it all boils down to expectations. When you first snap a selfie, you have the highest expectation and you want the picture to be perfect. All of a sudden you look at it, you see imperfections, you're disappointed. Mm. But if you let it go for a few days or weeks, guess what? It's like sands through the hourglass. You no longer kind of look at it with that scrutiny. You can look back at the same photo and think, I actually look pretty darn good. How do you think this happens and why, Jamila and Rossi? 
Well, I think it's because of the rise of editing photographs, right? I get why people do it. It's because Hollywood has put out so many impossible images for everyone else to try and live up to that are all Photoshopped, and now we can all do it with apps. The, the reason I don't Photoshop anything, and the reason I don't let Hollywood Photoshop me, even my Marvel poster is completely unedited, is not because I'm so great and I'm on my soapbox. It's because my mental health gets damaged. When I look in a mirror, I feel disappointed because I'm trying to live up to an AI-perfected image. Mm. And so, you know, they tried to take my back fat out of an NBC like billboard for the good place and I was like put my back fat back in I insisted on it, it was like a boob at my back but I've got one when I wear strapless dresses because I've got big boobs this happens don't take this away I have to live with this <laughs> don't take it away temporarily otherwise I'll start to hate it I'm so with you yeah well you know what then yeah. can we take a selfie yeah. oh let's do, all right, let's do it let's not retouch it no retouch at yeah. all ready oh, yeah Jamila Jamil, Casper in She-Hulk, attorney at law right now on Disney Plus with new episodes on Thursdays.